All right, in this section, we're gonna dive into pacemakers. With all of these arrhythmias that we've been talking about and the need to pace, you might find yourself doing some transcutaneous pacing or you might be caring for a patient that has a pacemaker inserted. So we'll give a brief overview of the different types of pacemakers, but more importantly, we're gonna dissect what the language of a pacemaker is telling us. All right, so pacemakers, they are needed when the heart's own electrical conduction system is not up to standard. So if there's a slowing or a disruption, sometimes we need to come in with a pacemaker to augment that. Temporary pacemakers, transcutaneous. This is the one you may see on the unit when somebody starts to decompensate. It uses the same pads as your defibrillator would if you were in a code blue, but when we attach it to the defibrillator machine, there is a mode called pacing, and on there we can determine the rate and the milliampules. It can sense both the atria and the ventricle, meaning it's looking to see what's happening. Is the atria doing its job? And if it's not, we need to do something about that. And is the ventricle responding? And if not, we need to do something about that. That's what sensing means, is they're looking and observing. Consider it like a boss, micromanaging to make sure you do your job. Now, of course, there are complications. This is not comfortable, so we wanna give some sedation. And we may also have a failure to pace, so it may not be able to capture, the pads may not be sticking. If you've got a hairy person, you'll have to get rid of the hair first so the pads can really stick onto the chest. This essentially will give an artificial electrical stimulus to the heart in order to maintain the mechanical contraction. Transvenous pacing can be inserted at the bedside. It is inserted through the jugular vein and it threads into the atrium, right atrium, right ventricle. It can sit in either, it can sit in both, and it can be watching again to see what's happening in the atrial tissue and the ventricular tissue to make sure it's doing its job. You will see that your patients have this little handy machine. This is where we're dialing up the rate. So this one is showing 80 beats per minute. That's the minimum that they want. And we know that the normal heart rate is 60 to 100. So anything in between there. I've often seen in my experience that they will set it between 60 and 70. One of those 65, 70 um, to maintain a perfusing heart and cardiac output. Now, epicardial pacing, these wires are placed right inside the right atrium or right ventricle, and they're done during cardiac surgery. So you would not see this one put in at the bedside. The wires would be visible, so they are tunneled to the front of the chest, the anterior chest, and you would see those wires visible, and they would be hooked up to their machine. And then we have a more permanent pacemaker. This is also implanted in surgery. You would not do this at the bedside. It is inserted through the subclavian vein. And you often see what looks to be about the size of a deck of cards or something a little smaller, just sitting underneath the skin on the left side of the chest above the ribs. And that's an important element when it comes to doing CPR and having to put the defibrillator pads on because electricity, if we have to defibrillate them, because let's face it, pacemakers don't always last. They have a lifespan of about 10 years before the battery needs to be changed and they can fail, right? So if you need to defib them, that's absolutely perfect because the pacemaker is above the ribs, electricity is going below the ribs, so we will not damage the pacemaker. All right, so understanding terminology of a pacemaker. These are temporary. Remember I said they'll have three letters, so we're gonna focus on those letters. The first letter that you see it may be an A for atrium, a V for ventricle, or a D for dual, meaning it's looking at both atrium and ventricles. And what it's doing, the first letter, is it's telling you which place is being paced, which chamber is being paced. The second letter is going to tell you which chamber is being sensed. So this is like the boss looking over your shoulder, making sure you do your work. Again, we have A for atrium, V for ventricle, D for dual and zero or O, keep wanting to say zero, O for none, okay? So it doesn't have to be sensing the intrinsic activity of the heart, it can just do its own thing. Now the third letter is, what is the pacemaker's response when the heart initiates its own impulse? 
it can inhibit, which means the pacemaker will stand down, it's not gonna send a signal, and it will wait the required amount of time to make sure the heart will beat again. It can trigger an AV block, meaning, not a block in terms of an arrhythmia, sorry, it will trigger an AV delay, not a block. An AV delay, and that simply means that once that impulse is sent, it again will wait the required time when they anticipate the ventricles to contract. And if the ventricles don't contract, boom, it will send another signal. It can do both or it can do neither, meaning again, it's just going to do its thing. So that pacemaker is going to fire no matter what the heart's doing over here, right? Okay, I hope <laughs> that made some sense. Let's take a look at it in terms of putting these pieces together in a few examples. So in a VOO, a single chamber mode, this means the ventricle is paced, that the pacemaker is not sensing anything. So it's not really paying attention to what the heart is doing and that its response is off. Whoop. There we go, its response is off. So this is also known as asynchronous it will pace irregardless of what the heart is doing. So here we have a pacemaker set at 60 beats per minute using the ventricular paste, no sensing, no response to intrinsic activity. And in the example we can see, so these lines are called pacer spikes, where you see these red arrows. That's where the pacemaker is sending its signal. Every at 60 beats per minute, so every second, that pacemaker is sending a signal to contract the heart. These green arrows are showing that there is actually intrinsic. So we sent, we sent a stimulus, we have a ventricular contraction. Here we have the SA node, look at that beautiful roundup right, P wave, followed by a beautiful QRS. And just before that relative refractory period, thank goodness, the machine sent another stimulus, but it wasn't ready to take it. So we don't see an, an irregular heart rate there. And then it waited the required amount of time. And when there was no contraction, it sent another stimulus there. Now at VVI, the ventricle is being paced, the ventricle is being sensed, and the pacemaker can inhibit should there be intrinsic activity. Now this is a little nicer in the sense that when there is an electrical impulse initiated, so here we have the P wave, a QRS, a P wave, a QRS. So as soon as this QRS starts, it will give the one second, because this is again set at 60 beats per minute, so I know every second there needs to be a contraction. And if after one second there is nothing, it will send and then it will initiate an electrical impulse to create a ventricular contraction because it's the ventricle that's being paced, not the atrial. The ventricle is being paced, but if the, ventricle if the ventricles contract on their own, the pacemaker will not send a signal. It, or in the AOO programming, the atria is being paced, but it is not being sensed, and nor will the pacemaker turn off should the heart intrinsically create its own electrical impulse. So this is much like the VOO when the ventricle was being paced without any concern for what the heart was doing. We get spikes at regular intervals. And so that's what these red dots are, these red arrows are. That's my impulse from the pacemaker going off at that regular interval. And then the rest of the heart is responsive to that so we don't have to worry about sensing and pacing the ventricles. What we see here is we do have a P wave before a QRS, but you'll notice that the machine didn't take notice. It still sent a signal right in the middle of that QRS. Thank goodness for that absolute refractory period. In AAI, the atrium is being paced and the atrium is being sensed and the machine, the pacemaker will inhibit itself should the atrium actually initiate its own impulse. So here we have the atrial, um, the SA node, QRS. Now this one is set to 70 beats per minute. So it's going to be looking for that next contraction. And here we have a P wave and a QRS. 
and then nothing. And so we see this, the pacer spike and the inverted P wave and the response by the ventricles QRS. Another pacer spike and that P wave's inverted. Okay, so we have a few of those in a row and then the heart picks up on its own again and we have a normal P wave. And that tells me the SA node is, is taking over again. So this will pace when it's needed and it will not pace when it's not needed. Dual chamber modes, DDD. Both are paced, both are sensed, and it can inhibit or trigger. With the inhibit mode, if it recognizes that there is a P wave or QRS wave, the pacemaker will not fire. When that P wave does fire, the pacemaker sets its time at time zero, and it will wait the duration of a normal PR interval up to 0 0.20 seconds. If nothing happens at that point, it will send another signal for the ventricles to contract. So in this, we can see where the atria senses and it's not initiating a pace spike and the ventricle actually responded. So the machine did not need to send a pacer spike. But over in the next one, there was no P wave initiated. So the machine initiated that electrical impulse. We have the pacer spike, we have the inverted P wave, and then the ventricles did respond. So the ventricle was sensed, so the machine did not send a signal. Again, it restarts at time zero and it carries on and it waits for that next signal. Here, the atria again did not initiate their own impulse, so the pacemaker spike is there and we have an inverted P wave to show that it was responsive and the ventricles did not respond on their own. So we have another spike and then you can see the wide bizarre QRS afterwards. That's typical with the pacemaker. Again, it resets for time zero and it's waiting to see when that next P wave comes. And if it doesn't come when it's supposed to, you guessed it, we're gonna send an initi we're going to initiate an impulse. And that's what you're seeing carrying on here. In the next one, the atria does actually initiate its own impulse. So there is no pacer spike. And then the ventricles did not respond, so we have a ventricle paste. So here's one for you to work out. What does VVI mean? Ventricles being paced, ventricles being sensed, and the pacemaker will inhibit should the heart create its own ventricle impulse and contract. This is again just looking at the pacer spike, so you'll see these long lines and then usually followed by a wide bizarre QRS if it's ventricular and if it's atrial you will see it followed by an inverted P wave. I'm going to send these resources in your module as well but now it's time for you to do some analysis. Head on over to your practice session.